Once you guys got another video, Microsoft now controls all of your data on your computer. And we're going to go through it with their updated Microsoft Service Agreement here. And we'll also cover the Microsoft Privacy Agreement that is uh, also available. I'll leave the, both of the links in the video description for you so you can read them at your own leisure. I'm just going to pick out some key points here that might be interesting to you to let you know exactly what they're collecting. But before we do any of that, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Cells. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 or cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key, check out the links in the video description. Create yourself an account on CD Key Cells and use my promo code capital B capital R09 and apply this to your order, and you'll get a 30% discount on all your purchases on CD Key Cells. Once you've done that, submit your order. You can pay by PayPal. They will then send you the key and you can activate your version of Windows as simple as that and remove that annoying watermark on Windows. So let's take a look at the Microsoft Service Agreement and click here to see the list of services that Microsoft are actually talking about. Everything from your Microsoft account to Bing Search and Bing Services, Clipchamp, and a bunch of other stuff here, Feedback, Groove Music. You can see there is a long list of all of the services they're talking about, Microsoft Office, Microsoft account, wallpapers, everything is listed right here. MSN, all of that information, your OneDrive, Paint 3D. It's just about all you can think of that they are now collecting. And you can see here in the list, it says uh, protecting your privacy. And then it will go through a whole list of what they are going to be collecting, your data. So let's take a look at the data section here. So under the data section, it says how we use your information and the legal basis we use to process your personal information. It's listed right there. And then you can go through and read more about it because then there's another statement right next to it, which basically is saying the privacy statement also describes how Microsoft uses your content, i.e. your communications with other people and the submissions you send to Microsoft through the services, which we talked about earlier, and the files, photographs, documents, audio, digital works, live streams, and videos that you upload, store, transmit, create, generate, or share through the services, or any input you submit to generate content, your content in brackets. So right there, they're pretty much covered everything there that you would have that you're doing on your computer, which is quite scary, to be honest. And uh, it's all listed right there. You can see it. And I'll leave all of the information and links in the video description. You can go through in more detail about what they're actually collecting here and run through this if you're really interested. If you're not bothered, then don't worry about it. But if you're one of those people that are concerned about privacy and what Microsoft are doing with your content, then this article will break it down section by section and it will give you all of the information of the data that they collect and how they use your data. So just below that, we have your content here. So your content, uh, many of our services allow you to create, store, and send your content or receive materials uh, from others. We do not claim ownership of your content. Your content remains your content, and you are responsible for it. And basically right here, there's another paragraph right under here. It says, if you share your content with others, you expressively agree that such individuals have the right to use, store, record, and reproduce and send, transmit, share, display, and distribute your content free of charge and worldwide uh, for the purpose of which it, you made it available through the services that you use on Microsoft. So what that's saying to me is basically if you're using one of their services, i.e. Microsoft Teams, that person could record that information and use it uh, and do what they want with it. And it says that you are basically allowing them to do that. If you do not wish to allow others to do so, do not share your content through these services. That means don't use their services. Microsoft cannot be held responsible for your content or your material that others upload, store, or share through our services. That's basically detaching themselves from any sort of liability that will happen if someone does do something with your content. 
Now, of course, there is uh, rules and code of conduct that you still have to abide by and follow, and they are listed all here. I'm not going to go through all of this stuff, but there's also use of services and support here. And you can see there is some information right here. You can go through and read a lot of this. There is one interesting one here, which is under this section here, which says review. Where applicable, we may subject content to review by automated systems or individuals to identify uh, suspected spam, fraud, uh, phishing or malware or jailbreaking or any unlawful content uh, or behavior. So that means it's going to be an automated system and also individuals will also identify issues or problems that we mentioned there. Now, under the rules of conduct, you can see here, code of conduct, you are responsible for your uh, conduct and content when using their services. And you can also see there, there is a list there that says content materials or actions that violate these terms are not permitted. And by agreeing these terms, you agree by abiding by these rules. And there's a bunch of them there. Uh, and you can see there's a long list of stuff there, uh, which is uh, pretty much covers everything, really. So here as well, they've also done some AI. They've added some AI information inside here. As you can see, reverse engineering, extracting data, restrictions to uh, use of data from AI services and things like that. And there is one part here where it says use of your content as well. As part of the provision of the AI services, Microsoft uh, processes and stores your submissions to the service and your spending from the service in order to monitor and prevent abusive or harmful use of spending of the service. So basically, everything you submit on there will be stored and collected. Now, under the Microsoft Privacy Statement, you can see here there is quite a bit here how they interact with you and how they collect your information. Microsoft collects information about you uh, through our interactions with you and about our products. Some of this information you provide directly and others we obtain by collecting information about your activities, usage and experiences with our products. Uh, the information collected depends on the context of your interactions with Microsoft. So basically, by using Windows and their services, you are going to have your data harvested, which is pretty scary, really. And you can go through this document and read it, and it covers just about everything. So every item inside Windows will have uh, data harvested from it or collected. And you can see here, Microsoft uses information we collect to provide you with a rich, interactive and user experience. In particular, we use your data to provide other products, including updating, backup, troubleshooting and so on. There's a whole list of stuff here. I'm not going to go through all of it. I think you're getting the general idea now that when you're using your Windows based system, it will be collected. And under the bit where it says we share your personal information with your consent. So basically, you can see here, you can read all of that information right there. But basically, you're agreeing to it when you're using a Windows operating system or any of the other services or applications that they offer. And that's quite a bit. And uh, again, like I've said, you can spend a bunch of time turning stuff off. But if you start using any of the other uh, applications that are built into Windows, you are basically going to have that information harvested. And uh, it's just the way that is with Windows. And you can opt out of some of this stuff here with ads. They're putting ads on just about everything now inside Windows, even the lock screen. Everything's getting ads uh, pumped to you. So if you're really privacy conscious and you really don't want to get into it with uh, Microsoft, then you're probably best not to use a Windows operating system at all. And there's plenty of other options available out there. And like I've told you many, many times before, using the bloat scripts or any of that other stuff that tries to stop Microsoft from, uh, you know, monitoring you or collecting data from you is going to be impossible because it's embedded into the operating system. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. You're giving them authorization to basically collect that information right there. The only way you'll be able to stop it is to stop using windows altogether and like i said your communications with other people the submissions you send to microsoft through the services that you use which we talked about and all of the files photographs documents audio digital works live streams videos 
that you upload or store, transmit, create, generate, or share through their services. All of this will be collected. And basically, you have no way out of it. Anyway, that's it for today. I will leave all the information in the video description. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. Have a lovely weekend, guys, and I will catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.